Hello, my name is Rick Houston, and welcome to the Scene Vault Podcast, your source for all things NASCAR history. Presented by Las Vegas Motor Speedway, America's racing showplace. I can tell you right here, we can sit right here and talk about our family all we want, but you let one son of a gun come in here and talk bad about them, and you're going to have all of us on there. <laughs> So, you know, he's smart Alec. I seen he wasn't there. So when I come through, I didn't get off my bike and push. I just rode through. Well, little did I know, his car was down the shop and the guy was working on it. He's sitting there waiting on me. He took his golf club out and clothesline me. <laughs> so I went upstairs to her sewing room, which is right above the living room where they sit there and watch gun smoke. Well, what's the first thing I do? I fired that booger off. And... I can tell you with grandfather and grandmother, they come from a different generation and they didn't show the love early on like people do today. Like, like daddy and mama, every time we left the house, love you, love you. Yeah. The day NASCAR and all of us associated in any way with NASCAR forget its past, that's the day we don't have any future. So first of all, introduce yourselves, Timmy, then Richie, and then finally, the kid brother, Mark. I'm Timmy Petty. All right. Richie Petty. I'm the baby Mark. <laughs> For each of you, what is your earliest memory of your dad being involved in racing? If I go first, go you're oh, Anybody, you anybody, start. just uh, jump in. You can start it. Well, um, yeah. I can remember, you know, in early on, and, and Daddy did, like, he would take – it was a real race car, but he would take it to different places, and I didn't realize what it was. Uh, so that was probably on up in the '60s, you know, uh, on before '70s for sure. So, and then you know, we went to Daytona and Atlanta and somewhere else where they had a lake in the middle of it, and I was told <laughs> not to go near that lake. Was the first thing I do? Go to the lake. Did you go to the lake? Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> and you can only imagine what happened after that. <laughs> well, so awesome. I was. I was born in 68, and so I guess my earliest memories would have been early 70s and us going to the races with Daddy. Around the race shop, I didn't think nothing about, you know, being race cars. Nothing. It was just a – it was home. But I can remember, you know, when we was kids, going to the races with Daddy, probably 70, 71, 72, I can probably have a little bit of memories of him at the racetracks in early memories. Yeah. Now, are you are you actually named after Richard? Well, or how did uh, yes, and I, I and it's um, it's been I can't it's been aggravating through the years because back in the day when he was the when he was when he was the heat whatever, you know, I'd go to the doctor's office and they'd say Richard Petty and then everybody'd look and like where's he at? <laughs> and I'm like, no, I'm not the not not the older guy I'm here. But yeah, I think it was uh, it was uh, the story went that. Uh, uh, I don't even know. I can't even remember what the race was, but it, Mama had told him, "If you win this race, then we'll name him after after you." And sure enough, he went and won the race. But at that time, Elliot was winning everything going. So, well, you know, I've got a son named Richard, and I've got a son named Adam. Okay. And it's not by coincidence. Okay. All right. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm uh, awesome. I, I'm I'm Richard Ellsworth, and this is Mark Judson. Lee's dad's name was Judson Ellsworth. Daddy's middle name was Maurice Ellsworth, so I got I'm named after Richard, and after Daddy, and uh, I guess Lee's dad, and he's named after Lee's dad with, with Judson. And then Mark has a son. I'm getting. I'm stepping. No, that's up. fine. Mark, that's Mark, 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 Mark has a son's name. His name's Judson, and my son Ramsey. He's he's carried on the Ellsworth. So Ramsey Ellsworth and Judson. I got stuff Daddy. with Kenneth Wayne. Yeah. Middle name. Yep. Wayne Which is done. Pop Reed. Yep. You know, something that I have been intrigued by ever since I walked in the door, you know, most people listening to this would, would think of the Petties going back to the days of Lee Petty. You know, that's when that's when the Petty family started. You you guys have done research going back generations upon generations upon generations. Well, with, with, with grandmother's side, we can we can trace it back to the beginnings in Level Cross in probably 1870s, yeah, but Lee's daddy, we go back with him into uh, the early 1900s, but they, uh, his, his grandfather's grandfather, 
he lived up here above the road at Burnett's Chapel, and uh, but they come out of Greensboro. But the the tombs and the Hodgdens on grandmother's side, that's who come out of Level Cross. So so we can go back to the 1870s, chasing back to those guys, and uh, and with grandmother's uh, grandfathers, both sides, they oh, were they from this area. Earlier than that, in the Civil War. Well, yeah. that's, what I'm, that's what I'm going back to. Uh, so, well, Richie's our historian. He, oh, he, he's, well, he's, he's got it all. <laughs> but I tell you where we was lucky, um, my opinion, through the maybe from about 86 when we started, when mm -hmm. Dad started Maury's Petting Associates. So we started racing at Caraway or whatever. But from then up until we lost Grandfather, he'd come down here every day, 1130, picked us up, and we went to lunch. Wow. And so we were fortunate that our history lessons – came straight from the horse's mouth. Right. Yeah. And um, grandmother spent a lot of time down here in our, you know, she'd visit up there with, it, with Richard and Petty's and part of her routine. But we always listened when they told family stories. And we uh, we go back to, with the racing side of it for the Petty's, you got to remember our grandfather was in the very first race. Our dad and our uncle and our grandmother were in the stands at the first race. So we go back to the beginnings of NASCAR, <laughs> as far as the stories, what he's telling you. They would tell us stuff every day, and we would we we would, uh, we were like sponges. We would absorb it. Yeah, we're pretty proud of that. Yeah, for for to be a part of that. And we, he would what what he would learn a little bit. He'd learn a little bit, and I'd learn a little bit. We'd put it together, and we, that's how we continue to remember it. And that's why we're trying to do a a, a little YouTube channel now of our own is to document the stories that they taught us so we can keep them alive for our kids for generations to come. Because, you know, we're 50s and Timmy's 60. We're not spring chickens anymore, and we're afraid we're going to start forgetting this stuff. So we're trying to document it for our kids and our grandkids coming up. Because of that relationship with your grandparents and, and them being a part of your lives and taking you to lunch and telling you the family stories, I, I get the sense that you guys are kind of the keepers of the of the petty tradition because i mean you you have a museum in this shop here that's separate from the one that most of the public knows i mean there's some i mean you you have a museum here well i guess we're we were kind of fortunate that our grandmother didn't throw anything away, and our mother, <laughs> and our mother, she was the same way. Yeah, and, and we're, we're, we've, we've been here. We've done a good job being. Right. Yeah, but grandfather, one of his uh, his deals was, you know, put that. In the, you might need it later, and daddy continued that. So we got it on both ends. So. That is awesome. Now, what's your earliest memory of? of well, I'm. A, uh, I was born in 1969, so I'm I'm the latest, but uh, or the youngest, but I'm like Richie. I remember. Uh, going to the races. Our dad bought a uh, Trapco. Trabco motorhome. He's probably one of the first ones to carry a, a bus to the racetrack, but he'd done that so that the family could be together, mom and all his kids. And man, if you, that, that that's some of my earliest memories is going to the races in the motorhome. And especially when we go to Atlanta or uh, Talladega, we'd stop in Spartanburg and pick up our grandparents who yeah. Popper he had worked for Bud Moore at the time but he'd still ride from there with us in the camper so it was a big family deal and if you really track through our whole race and from the from the time we was babies mm -hmm. all the way up it was all done as a family mm -hmm. our, our mom and dad were really big on everybody doing things together and we, we were blessed I don't know that we knew the blessings no. of being as a family but you know we went around Arca with Richie and all that stuff mom and dad was there it was just it was it was us and it's I think Those that went back. I think that went back to Daddy growing up with grandmother and grandfather and Richard all going to the races together. It was a family unit. They were tight knit. I mean, grandmother was making lunches for the for the pit crew, and then as that went on, as they grew, then mother and Linda, then they were making the lunches and stuff for the pit crews. That, that was the catering service. So it was all a big family deal. But like Mark said, Daddy was really tight about having us together. It was uh, when he could, he, we was always at the races with him. Seriously, Mark. To add to Mark's story, um, Nana and Pop had went to Talladega separately, and Pop came south with Tiny Lund out of Iowa or wherever they was, you know. He's at Iowa. Well, I, mean, I don't know where Tiny was from. He I, was I'm from Iowa. He was, was yeah, from they... Iowa, too. But anyway, Tiny, I forget what year it was, but he tragically lost his life at Talladega. 75. Yeah. And 
not on pop we we drove home and i remember how upset pop and at the time you know you'd been a kid well, he didn't yeah. realize mama said y'all y'all be quiet one of one of pop's best friends yeah today. and we we knew of tiny but we didn't know the story until later but now him, pop was your kenny kenny my our mom's dad okay all right okay. Our, all right yeah, our mom's stepdad but he, he only was, so it was ever. pop myler and grandfather Petty. Right? Yes, okay. for sure. Yeah. <laughs> well, that was, uh, it wasn't Pop Myers, it was Pop Red. Pop Red, that's what it was. Pop Red, yeah. Pop Red. So we uh, called grandfather Lee Boy. Yeah, well, well, we, from, uh, later on. As he, got, as he mellowed out, when he was a young fella, <laughs> you went in there, it was grandmother and grandfather. And there was, he didn't, there didn't know, we, mall, we, we called grandfather at the end of his really strict days, and then we were fortunate to be around him when he mellowed out. Lightened up a little bit. Yeah, but we got to see enough of it that. We knew, and we, tow, and we knew to tow the line. And we seen the same with our, with our dad. The intensity that he had in the 70s that we grew up with to when the 80s and 90s, we could see a change in him. So we we were around some of the, the, the most intense times that you could think of of our grandfather and our dad. And then we seen the most mellow times of them. Now, how much time did you guys spend here at the shop? How far away did you live? <laughs> right across the road. Yeah, and well, see, and even I still live right through the woods, run about you know less than a quarter mile. Mark lives still right. I live right, right here in Richard's original, <laughs> original house. house, and the house that he right beside Grandma yeah. and Grandfather's little brick house. Yeah, really? and that was Richard and Linda. They built that house in '62. And and Daddy, Daddy, he lived right across the road. And then grandmother, so you know we. And we, my son Judson's living in my mom and dad's that's house. That's where he's now, living so. now. So. Wow. Yeah, and our sister Elizabeth Ann lives right across yeah, the road. So yeah. Now, does anybody live in your grandparents' house? No, it's it's right. actually I'm sorry, but it's actually a historical site now. Yeah. It's part of the Richard and them took it took it on, and it's part of the okay. museum. And right. you got which is the best yeah, thing best for thing house. for that house because if you go look at the house, grandmother's dad, he was a. Uh, 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 when you cut wood, what do you call it? Uh, Woodcutter. Yeah, saw, yeah run, sawmill. Yeah, saw, run a sawmill. Yeah, run a sawmill. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he run a saw. That's what I'm trying to think. He run a sawmill, and anyway, he they cut all that uh, uh, walnut wood and everything in there. Black come off, walnut. come off of this property. So that that that's really historical. That, cow, that house is coming up on 100 years old. It is 100 years old. I believe it was built in 20. I think I got documents of the first deed in 22, 23. There you go. So, that's, yeah. that's pretty neat. Years. But he was a he was a, a sawmill runner, and uh, I got documents of him when he bought his first sawmill off the guy up the road there. He bought two 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 mules and a and the sawmill, and that's where they got started at down here running their sawmill. And he was in other other little ventures too, but that was his legal ventures, I guess you'd call it. <laughs> <laughs> um, you you said that you spent a lot of time here at the shop. Where was the best place to get into trouble? And get out of trouble. Man, it gets, Show up over here. Yeah, when, it, when, <laughs> when it, 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 you weren't allowed over here. Yeah, during, I mean, during, like, okay. during the seventies, yeah, you coming through there. We thought we was big time. If we come in here about four o'clock and they had break, we could sit on the old crank boxes and eat peanuts and drink an RC with Daddy. That was big time. But then, as soon as the break bell went off, you was out the door, and we'd come out here into the back in the warehouses, and that's where we hung out. And I got you some good stories on them warehouse stories, but. Yeah, but that's on down the road here. But yeah, when we was coming up, me and Rich would be <laughs> at that great age, you know, 10, 11, 12. exploring. <laughs> but it'd be summertime, and we'd get on mother's nerves, and then she'd send us over here to daddy, and that wasn't a pretty sight when you had when he had to stop work to discipline you. Get out yeah, of here. He, he looked at us and said, "From now on, he says when I leave for work." Y'all leave the house. I don't care where you go, what you do, and you better not come home till after I'm home. So yeah. we would roam the woods and the shops oh, yeah. and all. This, and we, it was a, we got in a lot of good, good trouble and good memories. But here was the thing: if you come from Daddy's, we'd come across the road on our bikes. Once you got over to Grandfather's house, because he had a putting green in the back, you better get off your bike and push it on that little bit of sidewalk he had, because if you got on his putting green, then you'd get in more trouble for getting on his putting no green. Doubt. I told my mama one time and one time only that one of her whippings didn't hurt. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I found out very quickly that well, that wasn't you, the thing to do. You seen in our cabinet in there that uh, Winston Cup champion belt buckle and belt. Oh, I had the the Winston Cup uh, uh, tattooed, <laughs> the <reverse engine. laughs> tattooed on the backside of me. <laughs> Brandon. <laughs>
All right, so you, you mentioned the warehouse stories. Tell me a good warehouse story. Well, we had basketball goals set up in the warehouse. We'd play basketball we, inside. When Kyle and them would put them up where yeah. they, when they're, they'd go in break time and play. Uh, right, and so we'd, we'd go in there and play basketball, and we would explore through some of the stuff. Because the building we're talking about, the warehouse, was what they called the Chrysler Barn. It was built in the 70s when that's where all the – when they did the kit cars and all the Chrysler motors and stuff, that's where all the stuff was stacked up to the ceilings with parts. So you could go in there and actually get lost. But as the time went on, all that Chrysler stuff got moved out. Then all, all the old cars and stuff would get put in there. Well, we would get in there and just explore and find stuff, old helmets and things, and play with. <laughs> I don't know if I should tell this or not. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> There's the old 1980 Oldsmobile, and it's sitting down there in the museum somewhere. And it's got right there at the driver's door, it says N. And then this car was made from the these old model people, the, 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 the what was that, not Smithsonian, but Franklin, Franklin Mint. Mint made it and all that, and everything was to detail, and it's like supposedly come off the racetrack just like this. Well, the, Richard had this deal with Squincher, and... Uh, it was like a drink drink thing, like a Gatorade or whatever, Squincher. And it was like this little thing. So we're back there messing around one day, and we take him old Squincher things. We take a razor and we cut into and get the end on it. And so we stick it on the door, end. That end is still on that car today, and people think that Richard raced it like that. But we put it on there in the warehouse, screwing around one day. <laughs> It's even on the little car. Yeah, so that's what I said, the Franklin Mint. So, you know, like but the, that, so when you see that in. But it's part of the petty history it, because the little brats were in the yeah, house. Yeah, that, that's what I'm saying. But I say when, you, when you see that in on that car, do you think of us? Because we, we did that just messing around. Now, where is the in? Where is that? On the driver's on the door. door where you'd on climb the door. in. Yeah, so when you see it. But everybody thinks that's the way they raced it. It didn't. It come from me and Mark out there messing around the warehouse. <laughs> I do not recall. <laughs> <laughs> Play what, what do you call it? Play the, the, statue of, the statue of limitations have run oh, out. <laughs> so you've mentioned your grandfather and grandmother, um, and you've mentioned the before Lee and the after Lee. What, what do you remember of the strict Lee? Well, anybody want me to take it? Well, I mean, it's like Richie said, you, you referred to them as grandmother and grandfather. It, if you said grandma or anything, it was, uh, it wasn't pretty. And, yeah, and, yes, and, sir. And, and, no, and, sir. And him talking about the riding the bikes across the putting green. Well, when you, when you ride up daddy's driveway, you could look across the road back then. When grandfather's car was gone, he's usually gone to the uh, golf, golf course. course. So, you know, me, smart Alec, I seen he wasn't there. So when I come through, I didn't get off my bike and push. I just rode through well little did i know his car was down in the shop and the guy's working on it he's sitting there waiting on me and he stuck his <laughs> golf club out and clothesline me <laughs> <laughs> i've never rode on that well again. he uh he he was it was like his yeah you had to be yes sir and no sir it was grandmother it was grandfather and you he he wanted to respect them and who they were and we were brought up with that way with daddy too we was yes sir no sir yes ma'am no ma'am we were we we grew up in a strict family on our well, you side. you speak when you're spoken to, right. and never interrupt adults. I, I I can remember interrupting Daddy oh. and another adult talking one time, and well, he, he didn't say nothing, just backhanded and, me, and that was it. And let me tell you, you know, it was, it was like that yeah. was it. And the yeah. way we were brought up, when when Richard, Mars, and Lee were together, you got away from them. You did not. You didn't interfere. Those three were. Um, I don't know if it's like a... They, they had enough interruptions they didn't need it was Yeah, no, but I'm telling you, it was... You, you got run out. That, that was a serious conversation when you had the three of them together. And nobody better be butting in. I mean, they wouldn't. And so definitely, when they were meeting, we were, we'd have to get on the other side of the world, more or less. They didn't want to hear from us. Well, and I think what we call strict and what we thought was strict, listening to the stories that Daddy and Uncle Richard have said we, we probably really never even seen Grandfather Strick. Not not like Why? him, no. Because they said even when we thought he was mean, he had calmed down. Yeah. Yeah. So, not mean. I don't want to say he was mean. Well, he was Daddy tells stories about him when Richard and, and, and Daddy were, were, were kids, when they'd, he'd tell them, get out there and pick up rocks in the yard. Because just to stay busy. Just to stay I, busy, I, I yeah. Hands, yeah. Devil's and then place, but, and if you yeah. didn't, you'd, <laughs> Richard had put in a... Uh, a weight room here in about 85, 86 when they come back. <laughs> for and, the pit crews. For the pit crews. Yeah. And it, yeah. it was a nice weight room and all that. So me and Mark, you know, we're in high school. 
So we come over here one evening, we're out here lifting weights, and, you know, this is this is big time for us because, we, hey, we had better weights here, and we had school because we're playing football and all that. So we're, we're working out, and Grandfather, he come in there, and he said, y'all come here. Yeah, what are y'all doing? We're working out. He said, I'll give you a workout. <laughs> yeah, no. He said, he said, come up here. I'll put you to work. He'd give us a hatchet and had to start chopping the uh, all them oak, all them oak trees in his yard. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, he he gave he handed me and him a hatchet, and he said, "Go around here and knock all the tops off these roofs. I'm tired of hitting them with my lawnmower." He said, "You got energy enough said, to lift them weights. Out, you can get out them weights. Yeah, you got enough energy to lift weights. You got energy to work." So we never let him catch us. No, nah, so we, we kept a <laughs> what was the we, backhoe story. We kept a look at. Well, that was with Daddy. Yeah, that was Daddy. Daddy had a water leak over his house one day, about halfway down the driveway, and a friend of ours from Random and Phil Pendry. He, he run a little dump truck back backhoe service. Well, he seen us in there and pulled in. Me and Richie's got work shovels, and we're probably, what, four foot deep? Yeah. Well, four in, foot in December, cold. it was cold. December cold, trying to find this water leak. And old, Bill old Phil <laughs> like, asked that daddy sitting there on his golf cart directing us, of course. But um, <laughs> Phil said, Chief, you need a backhoe? He says, no, I already got two. <laughs> 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 but you got to, here's the deal on the water. The, they, when they run the dinos here back in the 70s and all that, you, they had to have a lot of water. And we're and, on well water. Right? We're on well water. We don't have all that. So they was, Daddy had a big well over at his house. So that water came from his house over to the shop. And then there was two wells here at the garage. So it took three wells to keep this place rolling. And uh, as time went on, them, them lines would get, deteriorated and then start leaking well we'd have to go dig them up and get them fixed and then that's that's the deal on that water line now, now tell me about grandmother patty i'll i'll base it i've i've seen one interview ever with her and it was in grand national scene mm. and the only other thing that people seemed to know about her was that she forbid or forbade liquor on the car or, or, or whatever. Well, tell me, tell me a good grandmother. She, case. she might've forbid liquor and stuff like that. That was a story that went, but her daddy was a moonshiner. So she didn't, she wasn't that against liquor. She just didn't want people drinking and getting drunk. Okay. You know okay. what I mean? She wasn't against the liquor. Like everybody says it was her daddy made liquor and what was was the old story, you know, had liquor for, for selling, not drinking kind of deal, you know? So, <laughs> yeah. so that's her deal. But anyway, she was a strict lady too. And, uh, but she was really proper. I mean, you, you, people called her Miss Petty. We called her grandmother. And I can tell you with grandfather and grandmother, they come from a different generation. And they didn't show the love early on like people do today. Like, like with daddy and mama, every time we left the house, love you, love you. And uh, uh, so you know, they were pretty strict, but they wasn't really like – going to beat your butt right, you know what right, i mean and, right. and stuff like that but the only whipping i remember getting from grandmother or grandfather was at the same night uh mom and dad went on a trip and didn't stay with them much but we, i was at the house and it was one of them winters where it snowed real bad and and one of our cousins had took us to kmart or somewhere and bought a half scale m1 grand cap gun you know the little roll cap guns and I got in more trouble with cap guns than anything that you can shake a stick at. But anyway, when I got home with it, I was busting the gut to shoot that thing. And as soon as grandfather seen what I had, he said, now, Timothy, <laughs> don't be shooting that in the house. Well, it was winter, and they, they done told us to not to go outside. You know, it, it, we didn't have many bad snowstorms, but it was a pretty bad one. So I went upstairs to her sewing room, which is right above the living room where they sit there and watch gun smoke. Well, that's the first thing I do. I fired that booger off and and he started hollering, come down here and, and I think I got my butt tore up twice before I could get and, and, and <laughs> got that thing took away and they put it out there in the smokehouse and it stayed out there for <laughs> it's probably for years. Right you know. Wow. But anyway that's uh that's that's one of my fondest memories and it was had to do with getting my butt tore up. <laughs> I remember young memory, you know, going Growing up, going to grandmother's house, she always had that candy cabinet. Oh yeah, you know, yeah, you yeah. Know, you know, you, with you know, you chocolate covered raisins or peanuts. Yep, yep, you yep. know, you'd be talking about the grandmother watching us, or whatever. And I guess it was '79 when they was in Ontario. She was watching us, and uh, with grandmother and grandfather, 
when she when she made supper, we had to drink milk because that's what grandfather drank was milk. Yeah. And so I always hated that. Yeah, I didn't Mama, like Mama made it. sweet tea, and we I mean she she'd make two and a half cups of sugar in her sweet tea. So we was used to drinking sweet tea. But grandmother and grandfather would make you drink milk at supper time. So that was that was one thing she was strict on. And she made cornbread a lot. Yeah. But when you say strict, I, I just no, think it's just I respectful. Just, they just wanted respect. Yeah. Right. They, they yeah. showed yeah. respect and they wanted. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 And uh, you know, looking back, it wasn't. They were like Timmy said. They wasn't mean. No. But you, uh, but you told the line. Oh yeah. yeah. And it's yeah. Like, you knew it. You, but there it was no question. It's like grandmother's house. You didn't go in that front parlor room. Unless it was Christmas, <laughs> that's true. Or because the, the chairs, all were everything, all, like the, all the antique was. stuff. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, if you went in there without or upstairs, grandfather he he would get on you. Well, part of that was it was that black walnut, and the, and the stairs were real slick and steep. And what's the first thing a kid wants to do? You get on your butt and go down yeah. the steps. Well, the, I think everybody's had their butt ripped for that. You know, uh, going out so, and trying to go down the steps. Yeah. So they were. You, you 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 had your limitations of what you could do around them, and uh, and he was grandfather like out there playing golf. He in his front yard he had a a little like a chipping chipping area. You could take a nine iron or, or a chipping wedge and go across. It was about 150 across. And if he's out there hitting golf balls when he was younger, he he would say, you know, he'd come over and try to teach you how to swing a golf club. And he had no patience because if you swung it wrong the first time then he would just throw his hands up and say well you figure it out because you wasn't listening to me so he just didn't have a lot of patience for young young fellas right around that time <laughs> for sure but he taught me how to play golf he taught me how to I play mean, golf they, they too, yeah. about it. all right so big question here who was your favorite cousin on your dad's side was it sharon lisa or rebecca because surely it wasn't kyle well, I, <laughs> so I made a difference. Yeah. I've, got, I've got pictures to prove it. Kyle was my hero. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah, we, I mean, right. here, here I am. I, I'm 10 years old when Kyle goes to Daytona and runs that ARCA race. And a week or two after that, we had school pictures. And my mom had to buy two sets of pictures, one with the clothes <laughs> on that she wanted me to wear. Yeah. And the other ones, I, I begged to wear my Kyle Petty T-shirt and my Kyle Petty hat. Oh, yeah. Really? Yeah. So, no, I um, – well, it's like when we went to we, – there's pictures of us at the, the Knoxville World's Fair walking around the, the World's Fair, and we got the Kyle Petty shirts on. But, but, you know, coming up, here we are, you know, Kyle in high school. Kyle was a great athlete, basketball, football. I remember being, you know, seven, eight, nine years old going to the ball games just to watch Kyle play. Yeah. So there's, what, nine years difference between – Eight for me and nine yeah. – Yeah. Well, okay. Timmy's two. Two, two years. Timmy was he, – he grew up more with Kyle. Now, Rebecca – was she was a little younger than us, so four or five years. Yeah, so, I mean, I, I don't know if I got a favorite. I yeah, mean, I love no, them all, and yeah, they yeah. got. To Listen, the it, th this that but was. Me and Rebecca was closer because of yeah. our age. We went to high yeah. school together. Okay, all right. And and I still work for Rebecca to this day. So okay, yeah. But all but all four of them. I mean, like like I said, when Kyle first started racing. My, I mean, he was my hero. Yeah. Oh, that that was more a dig at Kyle than it was yeah, actually. Well, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, we had we had no favorites. We got along with everybody. We were all, I mean, we were all pretty good buddies for a yeah. long. I mean, but I can tell you like yes, I can tell you right here. We can sit around right here and talk about our family all we want, but you let one son of a gun come in here and talk bad about him, and you're gonna have all of us on you. <laughs> and that's yeah. the truth. And that goes back to grandmother and grandfather. Yeah. And we can have our opinions on Kyle or whoever. But don't you come in here getting between us because we're going to take Kyle's side. But, but like, like say, growing <laughs> up, uh, it, I guess it was whoever you were closest in age right. to. Yeah, yeah. Because, yeah. you know, you, so you, grew up you, with you went to high school together and you, you hung out around together. Well, and, 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 and it took it, different stages on too. Look, man, back in the 70s, when, like you said, when the king was the king. Yep. And we, we, everywhere we went, if we was lucky enough to get to go, we hung out in the motels together. We did stuff. We picnicked together every weekend, you know, at, at the racetrack. And, uh, it was just part of life. I mean, you, you didn't know no better. You didn't, you know what I mean? It was just good times. Yeah. Yeah. Was there a specific instance where you really understood how big a deal the Petty name was mm -hmm. to a lot of people? Or was that just something that developed over time? Probably the Petty Parfait down at the door. <laughs> yeah. After, after the King <laughs> won in July down there. And, and that's about well, you car to that 70, story, 77 yeah. or sometime in and there. And it was at the Reef. At the Reef Hotel. And uh, like I said, over the years, we stayed at the Sea Dip, the Reef. Uh, I 
Yeah, I've seen other, others down there. You know, and looking back on it, they wasn't really the fanciest, but they, they seemed fancy to oh, us. Oh, they was fancy because they was on the beach. The motels. There was, was good times. The motels, but they, uh, there was an ice cream shop, and in July, as you know, that race used to be launched at 11 o'clock in the morning, you know, for the 4th of July race at Daytona. Or and, earlier. Yeah. Well, it, well you, it started at 11, didn't it? Because okay. you used to have to go in early. But anyway, he won the race, and when we got back, that ice cream shop had a red, white, and blue, because it was 4th of July. It was called the Petty Parfait. So yeah, yeah. I, I, I guess think, that's when we thought it, it kind of took off. I think, I think <laughs> when I seen we was, I think when, when I figured out it was kind of a big deal, was going to Pocono, it was probably 74 or 75, and you showed up, and this whole little community shut down, and they had like a all the like the Allisons and the Petties, the Pearsons, the Parsons, Parsons, and these people would feed us all this Italian food. <laughs> and, but but they shut down their whole community and welcomed all these racing people in. And we were talking about that with Daddy before he passed away, and we couldn't remember those people, but you know, and don't know who would know them. You know, because a lot of those guys are gone. But yeah, it was just little things like that. It was uh, it was unusual that we didn't get around home that you'd see. It was like a block party when when you went to Pocono and everybody knew about it, all the, 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 the well, hot dogs and, back and, then. And you know? a lot of it was, uh, for me, the time, because, you know, when I come up, you didn't realize how big a deal it was till it was gone. Right. Yeah. So, you know, until after 83 and everybody yeah. went their separate yeah. ways. Yeah. I, I think that's when I started being like, oh, hang on a second. That was a big deal because up to that point, it just, it was the way you grew up. Part of life. And it was, and it's, I've heard Kyle say it before that, you know, he's in the first, second grade before you realized everybody in the world didn't go to Brockenham mm -hmm. and didn't yeah. go to Martinsville yeah. and didn't go, because you, you look at somebody at school, <laughs> you watched the race yesterday and they, what well, are you I was, about? I was uh, 1976, Daytona. Uh, I was in the third grade and we got back, because we take a week and a half, two weeks ago to Daytona Beach for, uh, for February. And when I got back, I was the show and tell. I had to get up there and give play by play of the race. <laughs> <laughs> so that was that was kind of neat. That was kind of a local celebrity in my class. So I got into racing. Um, my best friend from high school, uh, his mom is the biggest race fan that I know. I mean, she, yeah. I mean, to this day, on Friday afternoon, she prints out a um, – a spreadsheet of when truck qualifying is on TV, when, when the truck race, uh, the Xfinity race and qualifying and all that. And that's her, that's her weekend. And you don't mm. call her on Sunday <laughs> afternoons during the race. Yeah. That's and <sighs> Richard Petty is her idol. I mean, idol. And so everything that I've ever done in the sport has been, geared towards with, with this interest sandy and you know to my knowledge i know that she's met richard at least twice um and, and it's always a great reaction when she's able to you know meet him so i, I tell that story to to say this or to ask this what is your most memorable reaction that a fan has had mm. to either your dad or Richard or Dale or Kyle or whoever or to you because mm. you're a petty I don't that's a pretty loaded question yeah there's so many it would have to do with, it, it had to do with the king I mean because he, he's just well, he's again, just got like, that like Richie talking about that neighborhood that Everybody yeah. was there and stuff like that. That was fans. I mean, you know. Yes. And, and and I tell you, being young and they had the open house. Yes. Or the fan yeah. club yeah. deals. Well, yeah. yeah. But, but when they had that big open house in 1974, and then they had another one in '83. Yeah. Or but, one day. But to watch the people line up, how many people lined up and waited just to have a second to talk to that man, and it it you know put in perspective. Well, like the '83 one. A big deal. The '83 one, and I don't uh, the, the highway patrol had. Um, projected the, the attendance but it was a two-day affair it's two days saturday and sunday and each day had over fifty thousand people in level cross the the fields were full of cars the people were lined up for a mile and i think that's you hit it right there that's when i realized 
what the, the, the reaction the, of what's, what the, the what he fans meant reaction what Richard all of them at one group and what Richard meant to, to other people and what the whole family meant to everybody well and what he still carries to this day yeah too. but yeah, it was unbelievable and I, I try to explain that to my kids because you watch racing now and the stands ain't even full but level cross for two days man was 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 just packed full of people and it went from sun up to sundown it was a big big party there was stuff going on it was like a fair and that was you you hit the nail on the head right there that was when I, the 74 one the first open house when i realized it was a big deal yeah. what was your dad's reaction to that kind of stuff did he enjoy the attention or was he he more serious about working no, on the he, race car he, and, he, he he enjoyed the people he he enjoyed sitting down and talking to people, but if it was a day to to have to work, then he, people he'd get the bad reputation of being closed off because he had more important things to do. But on things like that, when it was time to meet and and, and get amongst the people, he loved the people. He loved talking to them and and, and, when, and what I remember out of him when they had those big open houses, is he he would be so busy because he was. He was he was the guy. He was the, the, this here, this here, that there. The orchestrator. Yeah, well, but I think that's what he did at yeah. work too. He was just he, he was gets a, he gets he gets the uh, as being as an engine builder. He was running the whole thing. You know what I mean? Him and Richard and Richard was 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 the, between them two. Nothing went across them desk without them approving it. So when they had them open houses, them two were putting it together. And Daddy more more so. Uh, making sure the vendors were coming in and they had the fire department going to do the park and just the little things. He the was managing it. details. Yeah, and, and, and that's what he was Richard all about. Richard would be out yeah. working Yes, too, he like, would be out put, put this sign yes. here. No, no, I'm saying that that's between the two of them, it's what people don't see. They were hands-on, and nothing went on without them two handling it. And so he, sometimes he would be preoccupied, and people would think, well, he's a, he's an ill son of a gun. But, but, but think, he was just had so much on his mind. But, but asking the question about Daddy with the fans and stuff, I, don't, I think he was shy, a lot. And, and I think we got a little bit of that too. We're, we, we're when you get us going, you can't stop us. But we're kind of, you know, really? kind of hesitant, <laughs> and we're kind of hesitant and shy to start out with. And I think yeah. Daddy was well, like, because yeah. he's he he taught us like he was taught, keep your mouth shut and your ears open, you'll learn a lot more. So, boy, only if I'd have listened. <laughs> Now Kyle, he didn't hear that tale. His he he was he's always his mouth open, and he's done darn he's done good with it. So we're trying to take a, a cue from him and start to open our mouths a little bit and talk a little bit. I've seen you know some of Daddy's interviews in the past, and and it was just I think it just surprised him the, the popularity that the racing in general, you know. Well, yeah, because they come them them people they come were dirt farmers. Yeah, man. but they didn't even have a bathroom in the house. They used an outhouse up until they were. Uh, Slop jars. Yeah, they just 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 wow. they didn't have anything. They were dirt poor, and they built their way up from from scratch into this mega uh, racing empire in a man, matter of twenty five years. I mean, so you go I, from yeah, I, it was you, no, remember, you remember mom, overwhelming after mom got sick there, some of her last days, and because daddy was going in the hall of fame, it was all during that same time, and she talked about daddy Richard Dale. All of them, she said, not bad for a bunch of old country boys. That's right. That's yeah. right. And I think it, and, that, you know, that states yeah. a pretty yeah. good job for a bunch of old country boys. Yeah, yeah. they didn't have they, – they, they come from just, just dirt and built it into an empire. 